Let's walk through an example of a zero interest bearing note. So let's say the company Chocolate Cucumbers issues a note promising to pay $25,000 four years from today. Now here's the catch. The note is going to be non-interest bearing. That means the Chocolate Cucumbers is not going to have to make interest payments throughout the life of the note. Instead, the note will be issued at a discount. What that means is this. Chocolate Cucumbers is promising to pay $25,000 in four years. However, today, when they're borrowing the money, they're going to receive less than $25,000. How much less than $25,000? Well, we're going to figure that out by discounting the $25,000 face value to its present value. And we're going to do that using a discount rate that is the implicit interest rate on this note. In this example, let's say that it's 7%. Okay. So here's the amount the chocolate cucumbers is going to receive. They're going to receive $19,072.38. Okay, I got that by just taking the present value of a single cash flow, which is $25,000, to be received four periods from now. And then we had a discount rate of 7%. Okay, that's the implicit interest rate here. So 25,000 divided by 1.07 to the fourth power. Okay, if, you, if you're not familiar with the time value of money, I encourage you to check out the video I have on the present value of a single cash flow. So what that means is this, chocolate cucumbers is gonna promise to pay 25,000, but they're actually gonna receive $19,072.38 today. So the difference between the amount that they are promising to pay and the amount that they're actually receiving is the discount. In this example, it's $5,927.62. That amount is implicit interest, okay? So even though chocolate cucumbers is not making interest payments throughout the note, Okay, that discount there, the difference between what they're promising to pay and what they're receiving, that is the interest. Okay, that's that's the interest on this note. So here would be the journal entry, okay, uh, when they actually issue the note. So they're going to debit the cash account. The cash account is going to increase by $19,072.38, as we showed before. Uh, then we've got the discount. This is going to be debited. $5,927.62. And then we're going to credit note payable for $25,000. Okay. Now, here's what's going to happen. The end of year one, okay, at the end of year one, you take the initial carrying value of the note. And let me show you. I actually have a whole schedule here uh, for amortizing this note. So the initial carrying value is $19,072.38. That's going to change over time. Okay, but what you do is you take that and you multiply it by the implicit interest rate, which in this case is 7%. So 19,072.38 times 7% gives you $1,335.07. That is the interest expense that is recorded at the end of year one. Okay, so the company's going to debit interest expense, but they're not going to credit cash because they're not paying any interest, right? They're going to reduce the discount on the note payable. Okay, so we've got here, this is going to reduce uh, the company's profit on its income statement. But again, there's no cash going out the door here. This is implicit interest. Now, here's what happens. Okay, so that interest expense, we reduce the amount of the discount. Remember the discount was recorded for $5,927.62. Now we reduce it by $1,335.07. So now the carrying value, okay, at the end of year one, after we've uh, recorded this journal entry here, the carrying value of the note is now $20,407.45. Okay, we have basically updated, so, so the initial carrying value, this right here, $19,072.38, Okay, that's the 25,000 minus the discount. But now we have reduced the discount, okay? And so as we reduce the discount, the carrying value, which again is just the note payable of 25,000 minus, minus the unamortized discount, okay? That increases because we have reduced the discount. Now, the end of year two, we're gonna make another journal entry. We're gonna debit interest expense, credit discount on note payable, but it's not gonna be for these amounts. Okay, it's gonna be for a different amount. Okay, so now we're gonna take 20,407.45, multiply it by 7%. Okay, that's the implicit interest rate. We get $1,428.52. Okay, then, so then we debit interest expense for that amount, credit discount on note payable for that amount. Okay, and then this amount gets added to this. And we end up with an ending carrying value of $21,835.97. Multiply that by 7%. That gives you the interest expense that's recorded at the end of year three. 
Okay, then that discount is added to the carrying value. The new carrying value is 23364 I think you're getting the picture. Multiply that by 7% gets the interest expense for the end of year four, $1,635.51. Now, when we uh, make that entry where we debit interest expense and credit discount on no payable for $1635.51, that brings our carrying value to $25,000. And we will have the final journal entry Okay, the final journal entry, which will be the company saying, uh, "All right, now we're going to repay. We're going to pay that twenty-five thousand dollars that we promised." So that final journal entry, they would debit note payable, and they would credit cash. Okay, for twenty-five thousand dollars, and there's no entry uh, re related to the discount because we we've, we've already made those journal entries along the way. So when they actually pay the cash. At the end, they've already fully amortized the discount. The discount has been taken care of. It has gone to zero. And then at that point, they debit the note payable and credit the cash count when they paid the $25,000 that they had initially promised to pay.